Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and doing great. In the previous lecture, we discussed what kind of manufacturing operations are being carried out in a manufacturing plant. In this lecture, I'll focus on various important metrics that are used to describe the working of a manufacturing plant. These metrics are pivotal for defining whether the production system is meeting its target or not. So what happens in a manufacturing system is that some value is added into a starting raw material, but there should be some mechanism that can ensure us that value is being added. Therefore, we resort to some quantitative metrics, or you can say some numbers that can give us an idea whether we are achieving the value addition we wished for or not. These metrics will allow us to adjust our thinking, estimate the product cost, track its performance, and most importantly, compare different methods for manufacturing the same product. These metrics are broadly categorized as production performance measures and manufacturing costs. By the name, you can see what each category is going to represent. Production performance metrics are only concerned with the output of the manufacturing system. That is, how long will it take to manufacture a part, how much equipment utilization is there, and few other such things. So let's take a look at these metrics one by one. The first one I'm going to discuss is cycle time. This is the time required for a work unit to be processed and assembled on a workstation. This time includes the time from the arrival of the work unit on the machine till the arrival of the next work unit on the same machine. Therefore, the machine cycles through this time and in each cycle, it finishes processing on one work unit. The cycle time will allow us to figure out the production rate. However, cycle time is related to a single workstation, whereas production rate is for the whole manufacturing plant. Therefore, it is normally expressed as work units completed in a unit time. And the unit of time can be hours, days, months, or even years. Moving on, a metric for equipment reliability that is normally used is called availability. That is the time for which the equipment is actually available for processing. Ideally, the availability should be one, but if a machine breaks down, it will require some time to get repaired. And that time is lost, which makes the availability fall. Mathematically, the availability is defined as the ratio of the difference between the mean time before failure and the mean time to repair to the mean time before failure. For example, if a machine breaks down after averagely 100 days and it takes 5 days to repair, then availability would be 100 minus 5 divided by 100, that is 0.95 or 95%. So we can say that the machine is available 95% of the time. Moving on with the production performance metrics, we arrive at the term production capacity. This is the maximum production rate a particular setup can have. Once again, this can be defined either in hours, days, months, or years. By combining the production rate and production capacity, we can define utilization of the factory resources as well. Utilization is the proportion of the time a production resource is used relative to the time available under the definition of plant capacity. For example, if the plant capacity is 1000 units per day, whereas current production rate is 700 units per day, then resources are being utilized 70%. A low utilization would mean that the factory should aim to get more orders from the client and try to fully utilize the setup that has been installed after a considerable investment. Another very important term is manufacturing lead time, or for short, MLT. This is the total time required to process a given raw material or part through the plant. This time includes any time delays, waiting time, transportation time, etc. In simpler words, we can say manufacturing lead time is the time a part spends in the factory. Obviously, when in factory, there would be a portion of time in which some operation is being carried out on the part, whereas at others, the part would be simply waiting in queue, stored in warehouse, or being transferred from one workstation to the other. Therefore, the whole manufacturing lead time is divided into operation 
and non-operation times. I've already discussed in the previous lecture that non-operation time is about 95% of the manufacturing lead time because any time in which actual process is not being performed on the work unit is counted towards non-operation time. This may include transportation, waiting in queues, suboptimal planning of batches, inspection, equipment and availability, workload imbalance, etc. Moving on to the last production performance metric that I am going to discuss brings us to work in process or work in progress abbreviated as WIP. This is the number of work units that are currently present in the factory and work is being done on them or are between processing operations. Of course, if work in progress is too much, it means the plant is not finishing the product but more and more input parts are entering the plant. This will cause longer queues, more waiting in storage, etc. and hence the overall manufacturing lead time will increase. Let's now discuss the financial metric or manufacturing costs that are associated with any manufacturing system. Metrics related to manufacturing costs are often the only deciding factors for choosing one production solution over the other. Broadly, Manufacturing costs are divided into two portions, the fixed cost and the variable cost. The fixed cost is something that remains constant no matter how much production is generated. For example, the cost of a machine tool will be a fixed cost because no matter whether you fully utilize the machine or never turn it on, the cost of the machine has to be paid by the investor. On the contrary, the variable cost, as its name suggests, will vary according to the production rate. For example, if a certain machine required electricity, then only when it is running, the electricity will be consumed and the cost has to be paid. If the machine is running 24 seven, then the cost will be the highest. Whereas if the machine is being used seldomly, then the electricity consumed by the machine will be much lesser and so will be the electricity charges. It is important to mention over here that normally manual production systems have low fixed cost but higher variable cost, whereas automated systems need more investment at the start, that is, they have higher fixed cost but lower variable cost. Therefore, the graph shown over here is quite important if you are comparing manual versus automated operations. This line represents the cost associated with manual production system. You can see that it has low fixed cost, but as the production quantity increases, the cost climbs up rather quickly. On the other hand, this line represents the manufacturing cost associated with automated production system. You can see that the initial or the fixed cost is higher in comparison to the manual system, but as the production quantity rises, the variable cost doesn't increase that much. Hence, the point of intersection of both lines defines the production quantity after which automated system will be economical as compared to the manual system. Therefore, if an industry is planning to have production quantity greater than the break-even point, then automated solution would be beneficial, whereas for low production quantities, manual system would be sufficient. Another way to look at the manufacturing cost is to divide it into three separate costs. And these costs are cost of direct labor, material cost, and overhead cost. By name, it's quite clear what direct labor cost will represent. It represents the sum of wages and bonuses or, or any financial benefit given to the workers who are performing processing or assembly tasks using the production equipment. Secondly, the material cost accounts for the cost of all raw materials required for the production. Everything except these two costs is summed under the heading of overheads. So all the expenses of running the industry, whether we talk about facilities or the business side, comes under this heading. Therefore, it is sometimes logical to divide overhead into factory overheads and corporate overheads. The tables shown over here list some of the overhead expenses both for the factory and corporate sections. You can see that any expense related to the processing or assembly task being performed at the factory floor are termed as factory overhead, whereas things related to manufacturing support system 
are listed under the corporate overhead expenses. I hope you guys remember what facilities and manufacturing support systems are from the first lecture. Figuring out the costs of various aspects of manufacturing system better equip us to decide the selling price. Typically, only 40% of the selling price is the actual manufacturing cost, whereas 45% is for corporate side and 15% is normally the profit. The figure here shows the divisions of manufacturing cost and the selling price. Note that this division is not a reference but is only a typical division. Depending on the product, industry, economical situation, the percentages may be revised. So dear learners, this was everything for this portion of the video. Do watch the next portion of this lecture. Till then, take care and goodbye.